As more Indian consumers perform online transactions, banks today are looking at accelerating service digitization. And as part of that, redesigning experiences. A worrying trend is that those consumers are choosing convenience over security, with surveys showing 47% using the same credential across online accounts. In addition, over the last two years, the workplace has dispersed to support remote access. This creates a new and rich access channel for adversaries to launch attacks on privileged users, executives, and employees. How can banks secure their environment in this case? Savvy banks in India are now moving beyond the traditional perimeter-based approach and employing modern practices to address cybersecurity, such as zero trust. As we all know, zero trust is not a product. It is an overall security strategy that has to be aligned to business goals. Zero Trust is based on three core principles. Never trust, always verify, which means never assume that any user, application, device or process is trustworthy. Instead, continuously evaluate whether someone or something should have access to sensitive data based on contextual information. Number two, have list privilege that provides minimal access to perform certain job functions. Last but not the least, assume breach, which means identify threats and automate responses that not only stop the immediate attack, but dynamically adapt access points. Zero Trust can enable real business outcomes for banks. Let me share a few examples of Zero Trust use cases that banks in India can leverage. As banks aim to onboard more customers online, passwordless authentication can help provide them frictionless and secure experience. Secondly, as banks aim for a faster go-to-market by modernizing legacy applications for the hybrid cloud, putting controls to get complete visibility and centrally managing access across the hybrid cloud can help in making sure right user under the right condition have the right access to the right data. Lastly, as banks aim to protect customer privacy and improve compliance, having controls will help to identify and secure critical data and manage user access. With so many use cases, the million dollar question is how and where should banks get started with the Zero Trust The Zero Trust implementation is not a sprint, it's a marathon. It is best to follow a focused approach that applies the principles of Zero Trust in the context of strategic initiatives, limiting the typical boil the ocean approach, aiming for quick wins instead. Based on our experience of working with banks globally, we have seen success with the following three-step approach. Majority of the banks are likely to have already implemented several controls that align with the Zero Trust framework. For example, privilege access management, behavior-based authentication, etc. It is hence important to benchmark the existing controls with reference to the Zero Trust framework and determine an agile state measure. <clears throat> Next step, is to identify and prioritize use cases based on the business need of the bank. Some of the prioritized use cases are segmentation-driven data security, workload security, and integrated security. The third step is to define and establish a zero trust roadmap that guides the implementation and progress on the zero trust maturity model. As you can see, putting zero trust into action requires careful planning. Banks can benefit immensely from the IBM Zero Trust Framing Workshop, a holistic review of people, processes, and technology where we work with the bank's security, IT, and business teams to identify existing capabilities, uh, gaps across the Zero Trust Framework, and develop an actionable roadmap. IBM can help banks go fearless with Zero Trust.